Captain's Log, Stardate 4847.3. The Farragut has been ordered to the Acasa system on a mission that exemplifies the best nature of our Federation. The only inhabited world is an icy moon orbiting the gas giant Solon. The Solani, an ancient race of scholars and historians, have kept themselves at a distance from galactic politics and alliances for centuries. Now, for the first time, they have invited the Federation to meet with them. This is my first diplomatic mission as commander of the Farragut, and reports indicate the Solani are friendly. Let's hope the reports are correct. Full stop, Captain. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Mr. Akiva, contact the Solani and let them know that we've arrived. Aye, sir. Any update on those strange energy readings? Yes, sir. They've increased in intensity, but I still can't identify the source. Could it be some sort of background radiation? I don't think so. It's too strong. It doesn't appear to be affecting any of our systems. Keep an eye on it. Any luck? No, sir. No response to our hails on any standard frequency. That's odd. They asked us here. Why don't they want to talk to us? Mr. Prescott. Yes, sir. What's the manual say about initiating contact with an advanced species on their home world? Regulation 46B, Section 1. Federation vessels should remain within reasonable communications range and await contact for at least one solar day. I recommend alert status. One solar day. Yes, sir. All right, then. Condition yellow. Helm. Maintain relative position. I'll be in my quarters. Let me know if they respond to our hails. RT, you have the bridge. Welcome to our world, John Thomas Carter and the crew of the USS Ferret. It is time to begin our great work together. The Council of Elders thanks you for responding to our summons. Please feel free to relax your defenses. We will not harm you. Akiva, where's that coming from? It's on all channels, Captain, but I didn't put it on speakers. I don't know how we're receiving it. I'm getting a visual signal as well. On screen. Do not be alarmed, Captain Carter. The technology that allows us to communicate with you is part of the reason we have asked you here. You can hear me as well? Perfectly, Captain. And you will not need to rely on your universal translator. We are fluent in your standard language. 
I am Alandar, leader of the Council of Elders. Welcome to Solon Prime. It's carried on one of their scanning waves. They're sending sonic vibrations through the hull of the ship. Commander Tackett is correct. But if it would put you at ease, we can continue this conversation on your standard communications channel. It's loud, but it isn't causing any damage, Captain. No, that won't be necessary. Perhaps we can learn more about your technology this way. You seem to know a great deal about us. We have been expecting you, although you arrived a bit ahead of schedule. Variations, as predicted. On behalf of the United Federation of Planets, I thank you for this invitation. We look forward to establishing a dialogue with you and your people. How would you like us to begin our talks? Communication and learning are both better served on a personal level. Please join us here in our council chambers and allow us to offer our hospitality. I believe you have the means to transport to our location? We do. If you can provide us with your coordinates, I can have my team beam down immediately. Are there communications linked to those readings, Commander? I'm trying to figure that out now. You getting suspicious? I'm always suspicious. <laughs> when you go down there, take this tricorder. I'll link it to my computer. My pleasure. I have the coordinates, Captain. I look forward to an exchange of ideas between our two cultures. Safe journey, Captain. All right then. Helm, standard orbit. Mr. Akiva, have Dr. Holly meet us in the transporter room. Mr. Prescott, you're with me. I recommend we bring a small security team, sir. It's standard procedure. Since the Sol and I invited us here, and they've shown no signs of being hostile, I don't want to offend them. But it would add some formality to the occasion. Have two of your men join us in the landing party. Hand phasers only. Aye, sir. RT, you have the con. Well, I guess this is where history is made. Your first landing party is a crew member. That's right. Don't worry. It'll be a piece of cake. A piece of cake? At least we know this is a diplomatic mission. Really? Hayes and Michaels, sir. Two of my best, and they have level three security protocol clearance. I'm sure they'll do fine, Commander. A little extra equipment there? I thought it wouldn't hurt to take a few readings on the surface. Perhaps our mysterious background radiation will look different from down there. Here you go, Jack. You can never be too careful. That's true. All right, gentlemen and doctor, let's go. Good luck, Captain. Energize. Getting the power surge. Something's happening. Bridge! I need more power. Buffers are at 114%. Integrity's holding. Transporter room. Mike, what's going on? Just a minute. Target to Captain Carter. Confirm transport. Captain, come in, please. 
I'm not reading him at the beam down coordinate. Landing party, do you read? Beta 6. Carter Farragut, come in. Transporter malfunction. Anyone hurt? No, sir. No, sir. No. Come in, Farragut. That was a rough ride. Sir, we should move to cover until we can assess the situation. Agreed. Was it a transporter malfunction? Transporter logs showed everything fine as they entered the pattern buffer. All indicators registered 100% integrity. Then they... vanished. There's nothing wrong with my transporter. I ran a full diagnostic two days ago. Then run it again. Aye. Ship sensors recorded a surge in background radiation right at that moment. We've started sweeping Solon Prime for him. Keep at it, Mike. All right. First order of business. Where are we? This isn't Solon Prime. The air is breathable. Obviously. Actually, it's great. No traces of industrial pollution other than a bit of carbon byproducts. Life forms? Lots. Mostly four-legged in our general vicinity. Some quite large. What about an orbit? No sign of the Farragut. Not even a communications satellite. Could we be on another planet in the system? None were anywhere close to transporter range. Besides, the nearest one was a gas giant. No, the sun isn't even right. Too yellow. Did anyone notice something during transport? A red energy field? Now that you mention it, yes. But, if anything interfered with the transporter field, I feel remarkably well for someone with scrambled molecules. I feel a little queasy. Almost as if I was seasick. I've never been seasick. But my ears are ringing. A little. Everyone checks out okay, Captain. All right, then. Let's find out where we are. Then we can get out of this cold. Sir, I'd like to take Hayes and scout the perimeter. I recommend you stay close to the beam down point in case Farragut is looking for us. I swear that's an oak. Sir? That's fine. Report back in ten minutes. Yes, sir. I don't want us to spread out too much. Set phasers to stun, and put your communicators on silent mode. If the Farragut is trying to locate us, I don't want a signal from the ship to alert anyone, or anything, to our presence. Aye, sir. You were saying something about an oak? Yeah. Start scanning the vegetation. It looks very familiar. Hail the soul in my council. They are hailing us, sir. I apologize for the interruption, Commander. We are waiting for your captain to arrive. Is everything all right? No, sir. Our captain and his party have disappeared during transport. An outside force may be involved. You mentioned before the background radiation we detected may have something to do with your new technology. Can you tell us more about it? Do you believe our technology is the cause of the disappearance? Our scanners detected a surge of radiation at the exact moment it happened. I can only assume the two are related. You're certain of this? I am. Please stand by, Commander. I will contact you in a moment. Sir? I sense it too. He knows something. Bridge? Go ahead, Mike. I've got a pretty good sensor record of whatever it was that took them. I'm transmitting it to the science station. At least we have something to analyze. I've got it. You might want to try running it against the background radiation and see if the next- I know my job, Lieutenant Commander. Sorry, Mike. I'm running it now.
It appears your theory is correct, Mr. Tackett. Apparently, we are the cause of this situation. I'd appreciate any information you can give us, sir. As you may have heard, our people have been studying history for quite some time. Our research into our own origins was completed a millennia ago, and we have been concentrating on other cultures as we meet them. A breakthrough in research techniques was recently discovered, and we have found a way to put it into practice. What kind of breakthrough? What you are seeing and hearing is the retreat from Long Island during your American Revolution. This is not a recreation, but the actual event as viewed and recorded by our technology. We can witness any moment in history and record and study it. Incredible. Our intention was to present this technology to the Federation as a gift for historical research. That is why we invited you here. And the disappearance of our people? It seems that our technology has had an unforeseen interaction with your transportation device. Our lead scientist believes he may be able to assist. If I could examine your transporter device firsthand, I should be able to determine what happened. Thank you for your offer. I'd like to discuss this with my chief engineer. By all means, Commander. Please contact us on this frequency at your convenience. Okay. Mike, did you get that? Yeah, I'm on my way up. This is getting interesting. Prescott to Carter. Carter here. I'm picking up a large group of humanoids about a kilometer north of our position. Looks like some small buildings as well. How many humanoids? Several hundred at least, sir. The way they're clustered... Commander, you better come see this. What is it, Commander? I don't believe it. We're heading back to you, Captain. I think I know where we are. Prescott out. This is incredible, Captain. You were right about the oak tree. I've even found pine, maple, hickory, even some poison ivy. It would be an amazing coincidence if these evolved independently on a different planet. What about Hodgkin's Law and a theory of parallel planet development? Do you think it applies? Only to cultural development, as far as I know. I'm hoping it's not the other possibility. Ship's log, stardate 4847.4. First Officer Tackett reporting. Captain Carter and the landing party have been missing for over one hour. Extensive scans of the planet's surface have come up empty. The Solonite Council has offered an explanation as well as their assistance. The Solonite have new technology that can record images and sounds from the past and apparently is not limited by distance. I'm not sure I trust them, but without their help it could take precious time to find our shipmates. You see that power spike right when the pattern buffer confirms integrity? That's exactly when that red stuff grabbed them. So they could be okay? Well. Their patterns could be okay, but what if they materialized over an ocean? Or in an iceberg? Is there any more data on the power spike itself? Only on the damage it did to the transporter. It wasn't much. Almost passive. We've repaired everything I could identify. But you might want to warn the soul and I. That is, if you're actually planning to allow them on board. What do you mean? Transporter technology is one of the fringe benefits of membership in the Federation. It wouldn't surprise me if the Sol and I were trying to use this situation to get it without becoming members. 
What if we limit their access? Don't allow them to see too much. We could try. They don't exactly appear to be lacking in the science department. All right. Mr. Akiva, hail the solenoid. Aye, sir. You better get back to the transporter room. I want security there as well. Good idea. On screen, sir. Have you come to a decision, Commander Tackett? We'd be happy to accept your help, sir. But you should be aware that we cannot guarantee the safety of the transporter until we can determine the cause of the original accident. I can send a shuttlecraft for Pataris, or you can send one of your own. The decision is yours. I believe you would call this a conundrum. The longer we wait, the chances of finding your people and rescuing them diminish. The risk is ours, and we accept it. I am transmitting coordinates for Vataris now. Please bring him aboard at your convenience. Acknowledged. Stand by. Chief. I have the coordinates. Energizing. Stand by. Damn it! Don't tell me. How long ago did this happen? Less than a day. He can't be more than 15. There are two more over the hill. It looks like they were covering a retreat. There's a road up there with indications of a large group of people pulling heavy equipment. Maybe cannon. I think this is a rifle, sir. No. It's a smooth bore musket. Manufactured by the British Empire in the 1760s. A brown bess? I wasn't aware that you were an expert on ancient firearms. I'm not. But my grandfather was. Taught Earth history at New Princeton. Had a whole collection of this stuff. Spent many of my summers with him as a kid. But how is this possible, sir? I don't remember stepping through a time machine. Neither do I. But something happened during transport. <coughs> Phasers down! Sir? Phasers down. Unless you want to take a chance altering history. We surrender! You hear me? We surrender! Well now, what we got here? Stragglers? Cross-check verified, Commander. Right at the moment of buffer integrity. Except this time we saw the hand in the cookie jar. You what? I adjusted the sensors on the pattern buffer in case it happened again. Good idea. Apparently. And? I'm not sure, but that red energy has every indication of chronometric activity. The last time it seemed to come out of nowhere. I'm guessing your new sensor logs will tell a different story? Volumes. I need to go over the data, but I've got a hunch that carrier wave is going to lead us back to the solonized time device. It doesn't make any sense. Why would they endanger one of their own people? Maybe Bataris isn't in danger. And neither is Jack. I hope you're right. I'll run this through the library computer. Chief, try another scan of the chamber. Adjust for chronometric particles. Aye. Why did you attack us? We're not your enemy. Saw you through the woods. Thought he was a redcoat. 
Those supposed to be uniforms. Red coat? You mean British. We're not British. Do you see any weapons? I see one. I think it belonged to Billy. We just found him a few minutes ago. Uh-huh. Hey, what's she doing over there? Doc, how is he? He's losing a lot of blood. Got him in the belly. He's a goner. The hell he is. Captain, the bullet has done plenty of damage, but I can stabilize him. He won't last long in this cold. We gotta get him in the shelter and light. She's a doctor. One of the best. And you're a captain. Where is your regiment? A long way off. We, um, got separated a few days ago. As a matter of fact, we're lost. Come with us. Commander, the council's hailing us. Thank you, Ensign. On screen. Commander, I have good news. We know what happened to your people and our missing scientist. Are they all right? We will know soon. Bataris took a device with him that will allow us to bring them all back. I have much information to share with you. Can you come down here so we may discuss the situation? I understand your concerns but we have powered down our device so it will not interfere with your transport. Stand by. You can't actually be considering going down there. Well, the background radiation has almost disappeared. I'm guessing the residuals from the gas giant. You're guessing? RT, they've tricked us twice already. Look, Mike, this is a diplomatic mission. They've admitted their complicity in this thing and they may have a way to bring back the captain. My gut feeling tells me they're trying to help. Ensign. Aye, sir. What if it isn't their device, but the radiation from Solon? Then I trust that you and Chief Galway can see me through this, Mr. Smithfield. On screen, sir. Commander, I have once again transmitted our coordinates. I promise there will be no interference. If my chief engineer will allow it, I'll join you in your council chamber shortly. Farrah, get out. Coordinates received, uh, sir. Well, I guess I'm in the catbird seat now. At ease, Ensign. Condition Amber. Hi, sir. Anybody get the idea of that transport? <laughs> now you just close your eyes and get some natural sleep here. Hi. Uh, Condition Amber? Basically. The situation isn't under control, but there's nothing he can do about it. That about covers it. Speaking of our situation, sir, where in Pennsylvania do you believe we are? You mean when? The General's aide mentioned a skirmish on the other side of the river. And the General stated that General Howe wasn't pursuing. I think it's early in the war. As I remember, the Colonials didn't get off to a very good start. 
There's something about the river that plays a major event in history. General, sir. I trust you slept well, Captain? We slept very well. Thank you, sir. And you? I don't have that particular luxury right now. Soon enough. May I ask you a few questions? If you came to observe the Continental Army, I'm afraid you may have traveled a great distance for nothing. There won't be any army in a few weeks. But, General, you said the British weren't advancing. They don't have to move a muscle. Most of these boys joined the army after the success in Boston. Now, the thrill is worn off. They are cold, beaten, and tired. At the end of the month, their enlistments will run out, and they will simply pack up and go home. I wish that I could do the same. But your cause, independence. We actually thought that we could defeat a trained European army. These boys had enthusiasm. I'll give them that. And we can certainly outrun them in our own backyard. But it is another thing when every day brings a new disaster. We thought we had outrun them and could regroup. And then, strange people start showing up. I realize that we appear strange. But please don't think that we're here to interfere in any way. Tell that to the devil, Captain. He'll be joining us shortly. The devil? The Jersey devil. I saw him with my own eyes. Excellency, must we bring him in here? He's not the only one who's scared out of his wits, Captain. Half my army spent the night on their knees praying. They say he appeared in a plume of fire. What next? Uh, Captain? Excuse me, sir. Yes, Doctor, what is it? Did he say devil? The Jersey Devil. New Jersey. I remember. The Delaware. Pardon me, sir, but I remember the Alamo. So what? The Delaware River. The crossing the Delaware River and the surprise attack on Trenton. It turns everything around. My folks never helped with my history homework, so I'm a little vague on this. I do remember the painting, though. On Christmas night in, um, 1776. Right. A few months after the Declaration of Independence, the army had lost several battles and was barely hanging on. Washington decided to try a surprise attack on a group of German mercenaries. Hessians. I'm impressed with Captain Cannon. I assume they were or will be successful? They took the battalion to Trenton with only a few minor casualties. With a much-needed victory and fresh supplies, it galvanized the revolutionary cause. Re-enlistment surged, and they continued fighting for another five years. All because that man, standing by the fire, came up with a brilliant plan and was able to convince his commanders and generals to take a leap of faith. That man standing by the fire is beaten, sir. And it looks like our untimely arrival was the last straw. Tackett to Farragut. Commander Tackett, thank you for coming. This is Farragut. Go ahead, sir. Transport without incident. Tackett out. I have studied your Earth all my adult life and have always marveled at your ability to put personal risk aside. You are giving me the benefit of the doubt? I didn't have much choice. You said something about a way to get him back? Yes. Bataris took a tracking device with him and left behind detailed instructions on how to retrieve them all. With a copy for you. Apparently, he had all this planned out some time ago. 
How did he? Never mind. I thought as much. This rescue plan depends on our transporters. It does. We have analyzed the system requirements and verified his calculations. First Officer's Log, Stardate 4847.6. With the help of the Solani, we are ready to attempt retrieval of the landing party and the scientist Bataris. I am officially noting Chief Engineer Smithfield's objections to linking the Farragut's transporter system to the Protellus device. She is understandably concerned about the unstable nature of the device and its power source. I am also concerned, but do not see any alternative. Acknowledged, Commander. We're ready here. Stand by. The power link has been activated and is holding steady, Alandar. Excellent. Send the signal. It moved. I felt it. What moved? The bag? The devil's music box. The thing shook like a bee's nest. Oh, no. What is it? Our means of escape from this place. Rich! Are you okay? Yes. Thank you. What is the status of the device? Checking. Tag it to Farragut. One moment, sir. I have the commander, ma'am. Oh, I can't wait to talk to him. Just a sec. Try her now, Helm. Still nothing. Wait. That's doing it. She's holding! We've stabilized our orbit. What can I do for you, Commander? How bad is it? We're still getting damage reports. Auxiliary power kept the warp core going, but some kind of massive feedback blew most of the other systems. You're upset. You're damn right I am. Worst thing is, it was for nothing. The only thing we beamed back was a fried piece of equipment. The tracking device. If it was damaged, it could have caused the chronometric feedback. We'll have to try again. That's not possible. The tracking device was the only way to lock onto them. Can we repair it and send it back? There's no time. The device has been severely damaged. The transdimensional doorway will only remain open in this area of space-time for another hour at the most. We have no way of knowing when or where it can be accessed again. The seventh access point. Now I understand. How soon can you bring me up? I don't know yet. Do you want me to make the transporter repair a priority? Yes. We may have another option. Call me when you have a repair estimate. Tack it out. What do you have in mind, Commander? Please show me your Solonet converter. So that's it? We're here to stay? I'm afraid so, Captain. This was not part of my plan. As a scientist myself, I have found that things in the field are very different than in the lab. But I had it all worked out for over a year. I was supposed to arrive moments after you did, with no one close by, so I could explain everything to you and show you firsthand how important this is for research. What's wrong? His physiology is incompatible with this environment, Captain. I can make him more comfortable, but 
Every microbe in this room is assaulting his respiratory system. Without my environmental counselor, I will not survive. I know, doctor. There's nothing you can do. You said it was damaged. Can it be repaired if we can find it? It was housed in the tracking device, Mr. Prescott. Not very wise on my part. Captain, if we can't get back, what do we do? Well, there's plenty of wilderness. I suppose we could take a long walk and just stay out of everyone's way. But what about the damage already done? I don't think we'll be leaving these people in the same condition we found them. If we can convince them that Batars isn't the Jersey Devil, that might help morale. Well, this devil won't live long. I suppose I could come up with some disease that would explain his red skin, but we can't let him get injured or cut. Bright orange blood won't look very good. It was his arrival that frightened them. How could we explain the red energy? There's a river nearby. What about swamp gas? You're kidding, right? Actually, it's not out of the question, sir. Go ahead, Hayes. If we could collect some river water, we could use Doc Holler's med kit to extract enough hydrogen for a decent flare. With some cadmium that we can extract from some of the local rocks, we could give it a red color. They may not know it isn't swamp gas, but seeing is believing. Sir? Looks like we got a plan. What about the surprise attack? One thing at a time. One thing at a time. Got it, sir. We can transmit as soon as the link is established. Good. Mike, what's your status? Almost ready. How soon? As soon as I... We have to restore shielding to the auxiliary systems before we can link up again. It saved our butts the last time, and I won't risk another... You're right, Mike. Standing by. How can you be sure this will work, Commander? You haven't had much time to analyze the Protellus device or our power converter. They're completely new to me, Alandar, but they operate on recognizable principles. The device interacts directly with the space-time continuum. Our warp drive and subspace radio do the same. Normally, we only use six access points in our equations. The seventh is created when the doorway is opened. Because it is outside our universe, its properties are constantly changing. The Protellus device predicts those changes based upon its last set of quantum variables. But the device is no longer functioning. Its memory circuits are still intact. I've accessed the quantum subroutines and... Excuse me. Tack it here. We're ready. The library computer has control of the target coordinates. Good. Let's go ahead and test it. Transmit the signal. I must speak with General Washington. He'll be coming soon enough. It's urgent. Send someone now. Look at him. Can't you see he's dying? It's a trick. He's ill. He's not from this part of the world. I'd say so. And is a member of our delegation. Do you really want to be responsible for an international incident? Runner! Fetch the general. Yes, sir. You gonna get that? What? Your tricorder. Didn't know it could do that. Sorry, Doctor. If it doesn't set the stun or kill, I haven't memorized.
These are similar to the stones we have in um, Afghanistan. I've seen the red flame many times when the weather conditions are just right. I'm not a man of science myself, Captain. Just a simple farmer. However, I can believe in exploding gas more readily than a fallen angel. Can you make it happen now? Not in this light. And there will need to be more moisture in the air. If I were able to demonstrate this in front of some of your men, do you think they would stop worrying about the devil? Perhaps. But it would take an awful lot more to get them to stop worrying about the British. Is that Trenton? Just a farmhouse, I think. Trenton is further downriver. I wish it were closer. Your hospitality has been most kind after the misunderstanding with Caleb and his scouts. But I could sure use a comfortable hotel with a well-stocked saloon. Saloon? A tavern. The town has been the unfortunate host of over 1,000 Hessian soldiers. I expect that they have depleted most of Trenton's saloons. We passed by there a few days ago. I heard there weren't as many as a thousand. Besides, won't they keep a reserve for their Christmas celebrations? Christmas? That won't be for another... Is it that late in December? I haven't written Congress for supplies or money in so long. I seem to have lost track of the date. Supplies? I heard that German soldiers were handing out extra blankets. Are you coming, Captain? Or do I have to send Caleb and his men after you again? I'm right behind you, sir. Captain? Vitaris? He died just after you left. They moved him out here. I wouldn't be surprised if they planned to burn the body. You did your best, Doc. When will RT try to bring us back? He can't give us an exact time. Something about time distortion. He'll signal right before activating. Were you able to collect enough hydrogen? Yes, sir. It's compressed in this. Did you find the rocks? How long to extract the cadmium? Just a few minutes, sir. We'll need something to trigger a spark. Got it covered. I heard he had died. I wanted to see it for myself. All of God's creatures have a limited lifespan, young man, and are deserving of respect. Amen. The general was meeting with his commanders. He told me to tell you to go ahead with your demonstration. The atmospheric conditions are almost right. We must also leave. Our ship will soon sail, and we want to go home. The general has decided that you will not betray us to the British. He is usually a good judge of character. You are free to leave. Mr. Hayes? I'm confused. Your army allows servants to wear uniforms? I am a soldier and an officer, not a servant. Where I come from, that is not unusual. My apologies. Let's do this. Time is of the essence. Gentlemen! Your Jersey Devil is dead. I submit to you, he was not the devil at all, but a man. A man from another land that died of a fever. Now I realize he gave you quite a start when you saw him, and I can understand why you thought it was a supernatural event. But I can prove that what you saw 
was a result of very natural series of coincidence. I caught most of that, but you're going to have to speak a little plainer for my men here. He appeared out of nowhere from the depths of hell. I saw the flame. What you saw was this. Mr. Hayes? See that patch of fog up there? No. I don't see anything. Wait. I think I see it. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Barely. It's gas. Like what you see over a cow field on a summer night. In my country, the magicians that perform tricks for entertainment. They use this gas to fool people into believing they can appear or disappear. How? By igniting the gas with a spark from a special rock, like this. This man must have been walking in the gas without knowing it and stepped on some of those rocks causing a spark. He was as surprised as you were. Here, you try it. You see that patch of gas over there? No. Where? Over there. See it? Next to that stump. I see the stump over there. Good work. You two should take your act on the road. Sir, signal for Commander Tackett. Ten seconds of transport. Perfect timing. It's all right, sir. It was all just a trick. I know. I saw them leave. Should we follow them? No. Let's put all this behind us and deal with the matter at hand. Report to Colonel Glover. He will put your boating skills to good use. Yes, sir. Captain, it's good to see you. Thanks for bringing us back, Mike. I look forward to hearing how you did it, but later. Send me back down. Me too. The body as well? Yes. Thanks to you, RT. Not all, apparently. No, sir. Not all. His environmental compensator was damaged. He paid a terrible price for his actions. Captain, I apologize sincerely for what has happened. It was not our intention to put you through this ordeal. The rest of us are all right now. But I think we left behind an awful lot of questions. What has changed? Yes. What's different? Everything looked normal when we got back on the ship. We were only there for a moment. Nothing's changed from my perspective. You two are just as I remember. Could use a shower, though. Nothing has changed, Captain. How is that possible? We caused quite a disturbance back there. And Washington saw... Washington? Washington, Washington? The Washington? Yes. 
the Washington. He was amazing and tall. But he saw us leave. He saw us transport out? Probably more. I'm not sure. But what he did see had to have changed him. Changed history. Not our history. What do you mean? Atar said something similar. The Pratellus device allows us to observe events from the past and future through a dimensional doorway, a window into another universe. To look backward into our own universe would be impossible because disruption of even the tiniest particle would change our time continuum and nullify the present. Instead, another present is created in another universe. Another universe? A parallel universe? Not parallel, Captain. I think the word alternate is more accurate. So you see, you could have done whatever you liked and not changed a thing here. Who do you think you are? Captain, what gives you the right to interfere? But there is no interference in our universe. But what about theirs? It's different now, changed. You've taken away their future and sent them down a different path. Even if we were able to get away with minimal impact, they're still thinking differently. They have memories of people that don't belong there. Who's to say you weren't supposed to be there? Your journey is now a part of our history. Our most important law is not interference. Yes, your prime directive. It is the only way we can explore the galaxy without damaging what we seek. Other cultures that will naturally become what they are capable of. Only those that have reached a level of interstellar travel and communication are contacted by the Federation. Your device cannot be used, not by us. It shouldn't be used by your people either. What if another Batarist comes along and wants to do more than just ask questions? But it is only a tool for research. Your research can cause great harm to any and all cultures you observe. The Federation may consider that a threat. A threat? You would attack us? But we are a peaceful people. Those aren't my orders, but that could change. I assure you, Captain, the device will not be repaired. We will consider the ramifications of our research. Thank you, Alandar. We would be glad to foster a new friendship with the Solonite. Perhaps in time, the Federation will be willing to help Solon Prime with raw materials. Bataris, explain your situation. Thank you, Captain. We have not misjudged you. Carter Farragut, beam us up. All right, son, you're fit as a fiddle. No sign of infection. I'd like to report for duty, sir. You've earned a few days of leave, Michaels. We all could use some R&R. &R. Helm. Aye, sir. Set a course for Argelius. We're back to three. Aye, sir. Argelius? Really? Gentlemen. I know this little place in the southern part of the city. I don't drink. Too bad. It might soften the blow. Of what? My damage report. The price of a successful rescue. OK, first round's on me. Save your credits, RT. I'm sending you the repair bill. You don't drink? No, but I do eat. How's the food there, Captain? You like spicy? You know, you're the one who pushed the button. So? You're paying half.
It is in the past. And yet my thoughts keep wandering back to those strange days before the attack on Trenton. We took the Hessians without a single death on our side of the battle, and then another success a week later at Princeton. Until the strangers arrived, I had not been a religious man, nor had I ever kept a journal. But no one else saw the way they left, and the new victories quickly buried the memory of their short stay. The tale of the Jersey Devil is fading into legend. Now the battles are over and we have our independence. Debates rage on new and old methods of government. A new nation has sprung forth on this world, and yet I cannot help but wonder if we weren't meant for something greater. In association with Neo FX, visualizing the digital universe.